let's take a look and see what's inside the Tamiya Mercedes AMG GT3 kit here on the Mile High Scale Modeler channel. Hello fellow automotive model enthusiasts, welcome to another video from the Mile High Scale Modeler channel. This is the Tamiya Mercedes AMG GT3 model kit in 124th scale. I wanted to do an actual unboxing of this kit to show all that comes in the kit showing the sprue out of their packaging. I wanted to structure my kit reviews to be informative to the viewer and help them decide if this kit is right for them and if the price they see out in the marketplace is worth it. We will go through the box quickly and then in more detail. The front cover of the instruction manual identifies the Tamiya brand and paints they approve to use for this build. Opening the instruction manual, we find tech tips from Tamiya on the left hand side, along with the start of the build with step 1. We proceed to the next page where we see steps to build the brakes, suspension, drivetrain, and start to install it all onto the chassis pan. Step 6 finishes up the installation of the suspension on the chassis pan and we move to the interior in the following steps. Tamiya does a great job identifying what color to paint each part in each step if you choose to build an identical box stock kit to match the box art. Step 14, we start to see the body of the kit come to be with installing the front and rear facade. Step 15 and 16, Tamiya has templates that are shown in actual size to use a black mesh that comes with the kit to trace out and cut. Step 17, we are shown how to mask the windows using the yellow mask Tamiya provides so we can paint the outer part of the window black. Continuing on, we start to see the finish line at a distance, but it is in sight as these two pages we see a rolling chassis become apparent and the body is installed on the chassis with step 27. The last two pages we install a GT wing on the model along with the body aesthetics. Last part of the instruction manual we see where the placement of the decal should be on the body. This is the window mask for the front and rear windows. This is something that Tania supplies in most of their kits. These window masks are pre-cut and are most of the time easy to place on the window. Tamiya gave us middle transfer decals for this build to spice it up and help give the kit a little more ump for the build, which is appreciated. We see Mercedes logos, rear view mirrors, and a side mirror decal in this little sheet. 
Just like most Timia kits, we received some black mesh for the grill and vent, which the templates can be found in the instruction manual to replicate the correct size needed for each part that requires the mesh. The kit comes with two decal sheets, the library decal sheet and a small decal sheet that has decals for all parts of the kit. We see some small decals that have writing, but it is not legible due to the size of the text. The seatbelt decals I am not too happy with, as I've seen better seatbelt decals from Tamiya on other kits like the WRC Subaru kits. The bigger sheet decals are nice and crisp. There is even carbon fiber decals, which appears to have texture to it. If you are enjoying this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified on when I release further content as this is a free feature YouTube provides to all of you. The kit does not come with an overload of parts to feel intimidated by the build compared to other kits that come with 120 plus parts. The glass here is a top notch quality from Tamiya as we see with all the kit glass in most of their kits. We can see a super clear line on where we need to place the mask in order to paint the remaining part of the window black as described in the instruction manual. There were no bubbles or imperfections to spot on this glass parts tree. The interior for this kit is stripped since it's a race car. The interior we see has a center console with a good amount of buttons to paint. The driver's seat is molded well and is very nice and crisp. Moving along, we have the stripped down door cards, which are nicely detailed. The remaining parts on the sprue consist of the brakes, control arms, side exhaust, electronic fan, and the rack and pinion. Being the Tamiya kit, the body pieces that are molded separately and placed on the sprue were taken into consideration to limit any body work that may be needed prior to gluing these pieces to the body. The hood latches and trunk latches were molded separately here to help with the painting process. We even find the door handles to be separate from the body. Tamiya took time to make it easier for us to install the side mirrors compared to other kits from other manufacturers. If you wouldn't mind while you watch this video, please hit that like button for me. This helps my channel grow and get my videos out there for other viewers like you to discover my content. These sprue trees, as we have seen so far, are nicely detailed as we see starting out with the wheels. There is very fine detail even for the vent that is placed on the dashboard. The vents have this fine mesh appearance to them, which with a little dry brushing can bring out that 3D appearance to the build. Moving on to the coilovers, we can see detail with the springs. The steering wheel will be a nice piece of detail for this kit. There is even nice detailing on the floor pan which looks accurate for a GT3 class race car, however most of it will not be seen once the model is completed. Please comment below if you built this kit and any issues you had along the way during your build. With this being a GT3, no kit is complete without some racing slicks. This is just a single tire I pulled as I didn't want to have all four tires in my hand. You will find there is no branding on the sidewalls of these tires, and there's a mold line down the center of the tire 
that can be removed with some sanding if you wish. Along with the wheels and tires, Tamiya gives you a set of poly caps which allow the tires to roll. The kit comes with minimal chrome parts as we see here. Though the chrome parts are minimal, they are indeed helpful. Here we see the Pan American style grille. We also find the rear light inserts along with the light buckets for both the front lights. Here on the body, there is a mold line that needs to be removed that is on both the driver's side and passenger side that we see here. The front of the body, we see a little bit extra of plastic on the edge to help make it easier to line up and glue the front facade. The panel lines are nice and deep, however I will go over them once more to help give the primer something to bite onto. Looking more closely on the body, we can identify where the body parts that were on the spruce tree need to be placed here on the body. I want to thank all of my subscribers and viewers who view my videos and provide comments on how I can make these videos more entertaining for all of you. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It's just a few things YouTube allows you to do that is free.